got to be greedy. If, you, if you're greedy and you leverage, you blow up. Almost every financial blow up is because of leverage. And then you need to balance arrogance and humility. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean. When you buy anything, it's an arrogant act. You're saying the markets are gyrating and somebody wants to sell this to me and I know more than everybody else, so I'm gonna stand here and buy it. I'm gonna pay an eighth more than, than the next guy wants to pay and buy it. That's arrogant. And you need the humility to say, but I might be wrong. And you have to do that on everything. I think Warren Ketcher captured the idea himself in his 1964 article, The Super Investors of Graham and Doddsville. Yeah. And in it, he talks about value investing is like an inoculation. You either get it yeah. right away or you right. never get it. And I think it's just true. I actually think there's a gene for this stuff, whether it's a value investing gene or a contrarian gene. I think that, that everybody appreciates a bargain, but when the market's going down, most people overreact and get scared. My stock is going down, what am I gonna do? So if you're buying a sweater and it goes on sale from $400 to 150, you get excited when you get to the store, but if you have a stock or you bought the sweater at 400, maybe you're not so happy. So I think it's, for me, it's natural, but for a lot of people, it's fighting human nature. But it, it is true, what, it's what Warren Buffett said, when you find out about it, it's like being let in on this little secret. And so if you can remember that stocks aren't pieces of paper that gyrate all the time, that stocks are fractional interest in businesses, it all makes sense. You have to, it's almost like you have to slow the game down, like they talk about baseball speeding up on you. You need to slow it down. I can buy this thing for a huge fraction of what it's worth. When I, when I speak to business school students, I tell them investing is the intersection of economics and psychology. The economics, the valuation of a business is not that hard. The psychology, how much do you buy? Do you buy it at this price? Do you wait for a lower price? What do you do when, when it looks like the world might end? Those things are harder. And knowing whether you stand there, buy more, or something legitimately has gone wrong and you need to sell, those are harder things. And that you learn over with experience. You learn by having the right make psychological makeup in the first place. You need not to be greedy. If, you, if you're greedy and you leverage, you blow up. Almost every financial blow up is because of leverage. And then you need to balance arrogance and humility. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean. When you buy anything, it's an arrogant act. You're saying the markets are gyrating and somebody wants to sell this to me and I know more than everybody else, so I'm gonna stand here and buy it. I'm gonna pay an eighth more than, than the next guy wants to pay and buy it. That's arrogant. And you need the humility to say, but I might be wrong. And you have to do that on everything. Warren. Warren evolved through three stages. He went from buying cigar butts and getting the last few puffs right. for free, to buying great businesses at really cheap prices, to buying and holding great businesses at so-so prices, right. and maybe even this new area of buying weird securities from crappy businesses at better than market prices, right. like B of A right. preferred right. or whatever. I'm still in phase one. We're still buying, we're still buying cigar butts. There's a good business there in buying them. Buying's easier. Selling's hard, hard right. to know when to get out. There's no timing element. You can never tell how big a bargain you might get offered tomorrow. If somebody comes along and wants to sell you a dollar for 50 cents, you can never know if they'll want to sell to you at 40 cents tomorrow. So you need to buy it and leave a little room to buy more and maybe someday spend your last dollar and buy the, buy the bargain and maybe it goes down before it goes up. So you always are checking and rechecking your work the critical thing, the, the, the thing that would cause you to lose your confidence when you're doing that would be if you realized a dollar wasn't a dollar. You thought it was worth a dollar, but Greece failed or the euro fell or collapsed and all of a sudden your dollar is only 30 cents and now what you thought was a bargain is, is overvalued. So that's the dilemma. It's not so much figuring out what it's worth today, it's making sure it'll still be worth that same thing or approximately that same amount tomorrow. So a lot of stocks are cheap for a reason, and often a value investor will figure out the reason because everybody else has gotten sick of a management raping and pillaging a company, overpaying themselves, deploying capital poorly, um, taking advantage of the shareholders with, with free stock or, or, or huge options awards, um, or hiring their brother-in-law. So, so there are stocks that have been perennially undervalued because they're run by somebody who fits that profile. A, a novice value investor will come along and say, well, that looks awfully cheap. And Graham and Dodd didn't really place the quality of management as high as, as they might have. And so 
Good managements add value. Good managements have lots of levers they can pull. They can buy back stock when it's undervalued. They can um, use the stock as currency when it's overvalued. Bad managements will think only about themselves first. And so those are early lessons, but, but profound lessons that, that I learned, um, learned them well.